George's Story Time. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm George Buxton. Guess what? It's time for a tale. The tale of Ramble the Badger. And today's story is called A Home for the Friends by Peter Bentley and Charles View. Well, I'm pretty sure you'll have a great time. A home full of friends. Bramble was looking for nuts by the river when a sudden fierce storm made him shudder and shiver. Oh, Bob! I'm about to catch a cold in this storm. I'm heading back home where it's cozy and warm. Then, crash! Bramble nearly jumped out of his skin. Whatever was that? Is the sky falling in? The wind had blown over a rotten old tree. My house! Snuggle squeaked. It's as bad as could be, but there was nowhere to keep out the wind. It had no wet, unless... The Bramble is coming to set. Oh dear, fretted Bam Bramble. My set is a mess, and I haven't much space for... Or much did a bird. Oh, yes. Thanks, said the doormat. See you tonight. And she scampered off into the grass out of sight. Then Bramble met Tip of a Toad by a flood. My mouth's ribbit, Tip of Grumble. It's all up with mud. Is a face in your set, you Bramble, today? Bramble looked worried, but up. Okay. Bramble walked on through the icy cold breeze and bumped into Boo running around in the trees. My nest has been buried by leaves, Bramble Boo. Any chance, little Bramble, of staying with you? Uh, it'll be a tight squeeze, Bramble said. We're all right. Thanks, said the hedgehog. See you tonight. Oh dear, Bramble sighed. When he got through his door, do I have enough food in the kitchen for four? And where have I sleep? I can't really say. Oh, I shouldn't have said that you could all come and stay. But Bramble was kind. He would never say no to three little creatures with nowhere to go. He searched every drawer, every cupboard and shelf. There was just enough food for three guests and himself. Then he looked in his junk room and found some old plates an old wooden stool and a couple of crates. But Bramble still worried. I've only one bed, but we'll all have to squash in together, he said. The toes about to snore. <sighs> the hedgehog's all prickly. <sighs> and the dormouse's whiskers are sure to be ticked. <laughs> He was worrying still when he heard a loud knock. He opened the door and got a big shock. There on the doorstep were Snuffle and Boo and Tipper with all of their families too. Oh dear, Bramble groaned. I hate to sound rude. You're welcome to stay, but I haven't much food. And there's only one bed. It's just not enough. No worry, grinned Snuffle. We bought loads of stuff. To Bramble's amazement, Mark in marched his guests with things that they managed to save from their nests. My goodness, smiled Bramble. There's so much to eat, and my blackberry pie, that's my favourite treat. They had a fine feast round the cosy warm flat. Then Bramble said cheerfully, Let's play some games! First they played Pin the Tail. That was good fun. Leapfrog was next. The toads always won. Last they played Skittles out in the hall. The hedgehogs took turns to roll up in a ball. Oh no! Bramble smiled. It's bedtime, I think. How about a story and a tasty warm drink? They all gathered round in a big snuggly heap to hear Bramble's tale before going to sleep. With the embers still burning, all toasty and bright, Bramble tucked everyone up for the night. My home's a bit crowded. It's true, Bramble said, as he took off his slippers and climbed into bed. But I really don't like if it feels a bit small for a home full of friends. It's the first 
Home of All. Well, that's the end of the tale of Bramble the Badger. Well, and hopefully I will listen, read some more stories again very soon. So until next time, viewers, bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.